We're going to show you how to install our two-inch wheelbase extension plate on a Club Car DS. This is for cars that uh, non-lifted or with our spindle kits that's lifted that rub a little bit on the back rocker when you're turning. This is great for cars with uh, 12 and 14-inch wheels. You don't have to remove the body, but we did just to give you a little help in seeing a little better. So you want to lift the cart up and put it on jack stands, remove the wheels and tires, then remove the dust cover from both the front hubs. And then with a 13 16th wrench, we already have this loosened up. You want to remove the nut that's holding the hub to the car and remove the hub. You want to save all this for reinstallation. The next step is to remove the lock nut from the top of the kingpin using three quarter inch wrenches from both driver and passenger side. And again, you want to save these for reinstallation. Now you can go ahead and push the top A arm up and out of the way. And we already have these loose also. Using a 9 16th wrench, you want to remove the cotter pins and the lock nuts, the castle nuts, from the tie rod ends on both the driver and passenger side, and the tie rod end coming out of the steering box. Now this cart's a newer model that has straight hold uh, tie rod ends. You can go ahead and tap them with a hammer um, and then pull the tie rod out and remove it from the car. If you have tapered tie rod ends, you might need to use a tie rod lifter to get these off the car. And then pull it off of the main steering arm on the passenger side. Now with a 9 16th wrench, you want to remove the bottom of the stock shocks from both driver and passenger side and pull them off of the top A arms. Now with a 9 16th wrench you want to loosen the four bolts that are holding the leaf spring to the car. You don't want to do anything to the center bolts. Make sure they don't come the whole way off of your assembly will fall in. While the front assembly is still in place you can go ahead and Remove your spindles from the kingpins. There's a Waverly washer. You want to make sure it doesn't come off with your spindle. You want to make sure that that stays on there and it's reused. You can go ahead and clean your kingpins and everything up and grease them because everything, spindles and kingpins, will be reused. Now you can go ahead and remove the nuts that are holding the leaf spring to the car. and then remove the leaf spring assembly. This will also be reused. Now you want to remove the leaf spring mounting plate that's mounted to the frame using 9 16 wrenches and it's held by four bolts, two on each side of the I-beam frame. Now using the stock bolts and our two inch extension plate, you want to bolt the two inch extension plate to the stock frame mount holes. This is going to be the bottom, this is the top, it's going to go against the frame. And the groove and the leaf spring, the groove for the leaf spring is going to go towards the front of the car and the bottom of the cart. And again, you're going to use the four stock mounting bolts. Once you have all the nuts and bolts started, go ahead and securely fasten them. The next step is you want to cut off the stock shock mounts on the top A arm from both the driver and passenger side. Make sure you wear goggles when you do this. Now using 9 16 wrench and ratchet, you want to remove the four bolts that are holding the top A arms to the car. You want to save these bolts for reinstallation and you also want to save this front mounting plate for reinstallation. Once you remove the bolts, you can go ahead and remove the top A arms 
then you're simply just going to flip them one half of a turn to where your stock shock mount is going to go towards the rear of the car and remount using the stock hardware and securely install. Now using 9 16 wrench, you want to remove the bolt that's for the top spindle mount and you are, all you're going to do is remove the bolt and flip this a half turn to make it like stock and then remount using the stock bolt. Now you want to take the new supplied shock mounts and get it as close to the stock shock mount weld as possible and keep it flush with the front. You want to mark And then go ahead and drill that with a 5 16th drill bit on both the driver and passenger side. Fix the battery now using half inch wrenches and the 5 16th by one bolts and lock nuts supplied in the kit, you want to bolt the new shock mounts to the top of the A-arms where at the hole that you just drilled to both driver and passenger side and securely tighten. Now you want to take and put the stock bolts in place. We're getting ready to mount the leaf spring back into place. They're going in the stock location. Now you want to take your leaf spring and your stock toe plate, sit it in place, and go ahead and install to the stock nuts, or I'm sorry, the stock bolts with the stock lock nuts and lock washers. Go ahead and securely install. And notice how the leaf spring goes in the groove of the extension plate. Once you get it set in place, go ahead and securely tighten and make sure you go back and securely tighten the rest of your bolts and then reinstall your spindles and your tie rod ends and your stock tie rod. And then you can adjust your, uh, your toe in by lengthening or shortening the tie rod. And you can also adjust the camber a little bit just by your centering pin. You can loosen that, but your tie rod has uh, threaded rods on it. You loosen the jam nuts on both driver and passenger side. You can thread this and it'll tow the car in or tow the car out. We recommend it be one eighth to one quarter inch towed in. And there's a better look at your centering pin. That will help adjust your camber. Then double check to make sure you got all your cotter pins in and everything is securely tightened and you're done with this install.